High-speed rail is going through a global transformation. China is developing the next-gen CR450. France is preparing to launch the sleek TGVM. Spain's high-speed network keeps expanding. And now, it's Germany's turn to make headlines. In a bold move to stay competitive in the high-speed race, Germany has unveiled the first step toward its newest and fastest train, developed in partnership with Siemens. And recently, the U.S. also introduced a new high-speed line, preparing for the FIFA World Cup in 2026. So what makes this new train such a big deal? How does it stack up against its global rivals? And what does it mean for the future of rail? Let's find out in today's episode of Great Train Speed. Germany's train system is one of the most advanced and extensive in Europe, known for its efficiency, strong integration across regions. The national rail operator, Deutsche Bahn, DB, manages a vast network that includes high-speed intercity express, ICE trains, regional services, RE, RB, and international connections linking Germany to neighboring countries. The ICE network connects major cities like Berlin, Munich, Frankfurt, and Hamburg at speeds of up to 186 miles per hour, offering a fast and comfortable alternative to air travel. With strong government investment in sustainability and electrification, Germany continues to modernize its rail infrastructure, adopt digital signaling technologies, and introduce next-generation trains. Among Germany's high-speed rail systems, the Velaro platform by Siemens is arguably the most iconic and globally recognized. Built on a foundation of real-world experience and continuous innovation, the story began with the ICE-1 back in 1987. This was followed by the ICE-2 in 1993 and the ICE-3 in 1995, each iteration bringing noticeable improvements in speed, passenger comfort, and onboard technology. From there, Siemens took the Velaro concept beyond Germany's borders. The Velaro E, launched in Spain in 2001, followed by China's Velaro CN in 2005, Russia's Velaro RUS in 2006, and Turkey's Velaro TR in 2013. Each version was tailored to meet local infrastructure, climate, and operational demands. In 2008 and 2010, Siemens introduced the Velaro D and the Eurostar E320, further elevating standards on Western Europe's busiest corridors. And the latest Velaro Novo represents the newest and most advanced generation in the lineup. With more than 2 billion kilometers of cumulative operation and about 1 million kilometers added every single day, this platform has become a benchmark for high-speed rail performance, reliability, and international adaptability. It's not just a train family, it's a legacy of engineering shaped by global ambition and precision. So what makes this new train stand out from the rest? We're about to break it all down in the next part of the video. But before we jump in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any updates from our channel all about the exciting world of trains. Recently, Siemens Mobility put its Velaro Novo test car to the challenge on the Leipzig Erfurt high-speed line, and it didn't disappoint. The experimental unit hit an impressive 250 miles per hour well beyond its planned operational speed of 223 miles per hour. This successful run not only validated the platform's engineering, but also signaled what future high-speed corridors could look like. First unveiled in 2018, the Velaro Novo isn't just Siemens' latest high-speed model. It's a forward-looking solution built for efficiency and performance. While speed is certainly part of the story, the bigger picture is about smarter, more sustainable rail travel. The train was designed around four key goals, reducing life cycle costs, enhancing reliability, improving passenger comfort, and integrating intelligent systems that make operations more efficient. One of the standout upgrades in the Velaro Novo is its improved aerodynamics, an area where small design tweaks deliver big energy savings. Take the newly designed bogey housing, for example. By reshaping the part that encloses the wheels, Siemens cut energy consumption by 15% a significant reduction for high-speed operations. Add to that a sleeker, more streamlined roof profile, and you're looking at another 10% in energy savings. When trains are cruising at over 186 miles per hour, those changes translate into major efficiency gains. In total, the Velaro Novo consumes 30% less energy than its predecessor leap forward, not just in performance, 
but also in sustainability. That drop in energy use translates to 1,375 fewer tons of CO2 emissions per train per year. And these aren't just theoretical figures. Siemens validated the data with real-world testing on high-speed corridors like the Cologne-Frankfurt route. But energy savings are only part of the story. The Velardo Novo was also engineered to be more cost-effective over its lifetime. A lighter car body, made possible by advanced welding techniques and new materials, reduces wear and tear. The braking system is more efficient and the use of a permanent magnet motor boosts power while minimizing energy loss. Together, these upgrades lower maintenance needs and help ensure the train stays in service longer and more reliably. After a year of testing, the motor delivered 10% more traction power, a huge 70% boost in braking power, and 5% better efficiency. It also allows for full electrical braking during normal runs, which cuts down on mechanical wear and helps save energy. What's also cool is that Velaro Novo is designed to be flexible. One of the most innovative aspects of the Velaro Novo is its variable train concept, a flexible design that makes the entire system more efficient and passenger friendly. At the heart of this upgrade is a completely redesigned train communication network, TCN, and what Siemens calls an empty tube layout. By relocating bulky technical components, like electrical cabinets, out of passenger areas, the design unlocks more usable interior space without lengthening the train. This reorganization leads to a roughly 10% increase in available cabin space compared to earlier Velaro models. And that extra room isn't just theoretical. It has a direct impact on the passenger experience. For example, the new layout allows for an 11 mm wider aisle. It might seem like a minor change, but when you're rolling a suitcase down the corridor or squeezing past a full row of passengers, that extra space makes a real difference. Combined with a wider train body and smarter equipment placement, the Velaro Novo's layout gives designers more flexibility to reimagine seating arrangements, amenities, and accessibility features. When comparing Europe's newest high-speed trains, the Velaro Novo from Germany, Spain, and France's TGVM, it becomes clear that each system takes a distinct approach based on different priorities. Germany's Velaro Novo is designed as a highly flexible and energy-efficient global platform. With a lighter structure and smarter aerodynamics, it uses 30% less energy than earlier models and can reach speeds up faster than 223 miles per hour. Its modular design allows operators worldwide to adapt the train to local requirements, whether that's interior layouts, climate considerations, or national standards. The focus here is clear long-term sustainability, customization, and international deployment. In contrast, Spain's high-speed network has built much of its fleet on earlier versions of the Velaro platform. These trains offer proven reliability and strong nationwide coverage, operating at speeds of up to 192 miles per hour, while they continue to deliver solid performance across Spain's extensive high-speed rail system most of the trains lack the advanced efficiency and design innovations found in the Velaro Novo. The Spanish model leans more toward maintaining dependable service rather than pushing technological boundaries. Then there's France's TGVM, also known as the Avelia Horizon, which reflects a different strategy altogether. Tailored specifically for France's dense domestic rail network, the TGVM boosts passenger capacity by 20%, incorporates advanced digital systems, and improves overall energy performance. While not designed for broad international flexibility like the Velaro Novo, the TGVM focuses on scaling up capacity and modernizing France's already extensive high-speed infrastructure. Each one showcases how different countries are shaping the future of high-speed rail, guided by their own needs, markets, and strategic goals. Supportive opinions around the Velaro Novo highlight a clear consensus. The train isn't the problem. Infrastructure is. At speeds over 198 miles per hour, traditional ballasted tracks become unsafe, requiring a costly slab track. But in Germany, high-speed ready segments are short, limiting the benefit of technologies like Velaro Novo unless longer routes are built. From a European standpoint, many believe upgrading existing lines to 217 miles per hour isn't economically viable, as it would disrupt traffic and hurt revenue. Some suggest Eastern Europe might be better positioned for new builds, though likely still within the 
155 to 198 miles per hour range. Others propose using HSLs for night trains, capturing revenue from currently idle tracks. Beyond Europe, there's optimism for Brightline and California high-speed rail. Supporters see Valaro Novo as a strong fit for these systems, especially with steep grades and future expansion in mind. The big question isn't whether the train can perform, but how and where will make the most of its potential. Bottom line, infrastructure is still the bottleneck, but the feedback is unanimous. Valaro Novo isn't just fast, it's a game changer. In the right markets, this train could redefine high-speed rail in the decade ahead. And even further, while Germany pushes forward with its Valaro Novo project, the U.S. is eyeing its own high-speed rail leap, this time across the entire country. A new proposal aims to connect Los Angeles and New York City with a high-speed train by 2026, just in time for the FIFA World Cup. The ambitious plan envisions a 72-hour journey linking the East and West Coasts by using existing Amtrak and regional rail infrastructure. The route would pass through major hubs like Kansas City, Chicago, and Philadelphia, avoiding the cost and complexity of building an entirely new corridor from scratch. Proposed by Ameristar Rail, the service would be privately funded, not backed by taxpayer dollars. It also draws inspiration from Europe's car-carrying trains, with plans to transport both passengers and vehicles across the country. Ameristar is targeting a May 10th, 2026 launch date, just ahead of the tournament's kickoff. With the World Cup set to take place across North America and the final match held at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, the company sees this as a moment to put American rail ambitions on the global stage. Ultimately, the transcontinental chief represents a renewed American push for high-speed, long-distance rail, part of a broader effort to modernize train travel for a new generation, right as the world is paying attention. And that's a wrap for today. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Stay safe, ride smart, and train well. Peace.